Hey, what's up? John Sonmez from simpleprogrammer.com. So I'm going to answer a question today that I get quite a bit or variations of this question, which it revolves around this idea of how to go from writing example code to writing your own code or real code. And this question is from Tom. He says, uh, I'm studying your Java Fundamentals Part 1 via Pluralsight and have followed many other tutorials. If you're wondering what he's talking about, I've got a Java course, which you can check out here uh, on Pluralsight. And, uh, and it, it goes over the, the introduction to Java it, and there's a part two of it as well. But he says, I follow and understand all the concepts as they are presented to me. If I don't, I replay the uh, and Google until I, uh, I do, as I just don't want to be competent. I want to be excellent and leave no stone unturned. So that's good. Um, I get the impression that when it comes to programming, there's a certain amount of stuff you just have to push through before you can practically apply it. However, I stop every now and then <clears throat> and try to construct my own code to begin a project I wish to build. This always results in frustration and wasted time, both of which are a hit to my motivation despite the fact I understand everything you explain in your course. I was wondering if you could give me some insight <coughs> as to when and how I should try to bridge that gap between being able to follow a lesson with the prescribed code and to write code on my own. So he goes on a little bit more, but I thought I would you know, answer the question because this is, this is basically a question that I get quite a bit. So, you know, to describe Tom's problem a little bit more, you've, you've been able to follow example code, right? You've, you've learned the basics of a programming language or framework, but you can't create your own app. You can't create your own project, right? How you move from that stage from, you know, you can do the example, you understand all that stuff, and now how do you actually create your own project? So there's an intermediate step, and I've recommended this a, a few times. I'm trying to think of I can remember any of the videos, but I've, I've talked about this a little bit, but I'll, I'll kind of rehash it a little bit here. But essentially what you want to do is you want to go and you want to find applications that you can duplicate the functionality for. So when you're trying to do this, fly, <laughs> uh, when you're trying to do this, what you want to do is you want to look at, uh, you want to look at uh, applications that already exist. That fly is just, just persistent. You know, be persistent like a fly. Uh, you want to look for applications that already exist that you can basically copy and copy that functionality because you don't want to try and tackle two problems at the same time. This is th the problem that really uh, causes people to have trouble making this transition is that they try to d come up with a new application and develop that application and then learn how to how to actually implement that and th those are two different problems so what you want to do is don't be creative at first right so go and find an application that already exists that's fairly simple that's close to what you want to do and just duplicate that functionality I think I did a video on game development where I told you you know go and create pong and then go and create like you know Tetris or Pac-Man or something like that just copy this stuff so that you don't have to come up with uh, you know how something works you can basically just and do uh, re-implement that thing and that's going to be a lot easier for you to do so that's a good transition so you start off and you're doing example code right and you're you're following along and you're writing that example code and you understand that then you go and you find some project some simple application that you're just going to duplicate the functionality so you already have a guideline of what you need to create and that's the next test from there is now can you do this it doesn't require you to think about how functions and features should work and how the user interface should look you're just focusing on on creating what already exists out there and then the third thing that you do is then you move on to creating your own project and and then you're gonna uh, you know then you'll have the ability to do that and then you know you'll, you'll be able to create creativity creativity be creative and, and and come up with what you actually want to build for an application and you'll have that experience so and, and the progression for that also is that you look at some some uh, progressively harder and more difficult uh, things to create right so maybe first you start off with a you know a classic to-do list app and you just duplicate the function out of that to-do list app and then maybe you move on to a more complicated app you know uh, I did I did this video I think on how to learn complex programming topics which you can check out here and in that one I talk about about 
creating like a duplicate Gmail app, and that's that's a good way to accelerate your learning. Would would be if you wanted to learn specifically web development is is to take something that already exists and and figure out how to implement that, and that'll be your goal is to create that that app. But but that's the general progression. You know, there's definitely a problem here where where you you get into the stage where you can write the initial code, but and you can follow examples, but you can't create your own application. So in between there, you want to create applications that other people have already created. You're just going to duplicate the functionality, and that's that's going to give you that that training. It, it's sort of giving you some guide rails before you go out totally on your own because you don't want to tackle the problem of trying to think about user interfaces and how the application should work and functionality. That's going to stall you out, and that's not really helping your programming ability. It's a different ability, you know. So don't try and do both of those things at the same time. So anyway, great question. If you've got a question for me, you can always email me at john at simpleprogrammer.com. And uh, I, uh, I have a request for you. If you haven't already, uh, click that subscribe button below to subscribe to the channel. And if you have already subscribed, uh, a, a like is always appreciated. Thumbs up there. And uh, I'll talk to you next time. Take care.